Hi beauties, it's Jean Persani with Beauty and the Stamper and we are going to make a nice card today. I'm going to be using some Whisper White as the card base. I'm also going to be using uh, some of the Tropical Escape and I've chose this one here. And we're going to make a non-traditional uh, kind of Valentine's card. And I also have just a little piece of Call Me Clover. I have some stitched ribbon. And in what color do we have? This is an old olive. But I'm kind of just mixing all of my different greens together. And I'm okay with it because we are kind of doing a, um, a theme here with this little flower from Humming Along. So I got some a little little um <laughs> I lost my track because I was thinking I was thinking why don't I use the die to cut this out? But then I remember that I wasn't doing that. I'm going to be using some vellum. So <laughs> lost my train of thought completely. But here we go. I'll be using this hibiscus flower from the Humming Along set. I also have um, some well-written dies here. And we're going to be using the word love here. And what else do we have? Um, I'm going to be doing some embossing. And right now we're just going to start doing some cutting and prepping. So I've got an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and I've cut it in half and now I'm going to score it and this is just on your basic whisper white so when I score it I'm gonna use this blade here for scoring so I want to score that at four and a quarter and I know that will give me exactly half and then I can just uh, fold that right over and get a perfect size card there. So then I'm gonna take my bone folder and we're just going to burnish that down and try and give me a nice flat surface there. So that part's ready. We're gonna set that off to the side. I'm sure we'll go hunting for it later. This is a six by six and I want it to be a little bit smaller than the um, size of the base here. So if this is five and a half by four and a quarter, I'm gonna do this one at, uh, let's see. I'm actually gonna give myself a whole quarter inch all the way around. So I'm gonna take a, a half an inch off and make this at five. And then I'm gonna do this one at three and three quarters because we're going to take four and a quarter and take a uh, half an inch off each side or a quarter of an inch off each side so and then save these for other things that you'd like to do because they are double-sided all right so we've got that on we've got this part going on here and see how it gives me that nice uh, quarter of an inch border all the way around. Really cute. I mean, you can be going with a man card right there if you wanted to. So next thing we're going to do, I'm going to cut this piece here. And I know that I want to use about this size here. To be able to run it through the big shot and then we'll just save this for another card and next thing I want to do is um, do a little bit of stamping here so I've got my block and I use my block when I'm only going to do one card or if I don't need something lined up perfectly so this is that cling 
that's on there, so it's on there good. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our Versamark and our black embossing powder. I am going to go ahead and find my embossing buddy because I do not want anything to get stuck on this guy. So I'm just going to rub that embossing buddy all across here and then put the Versa mark on. We're just going to get that all Versa marked up there. And just stamp it. While I'm stamping that, I'm going to put this away. Always make sure you close your Versamark pad back up. And then we're going to take, I don't know if you could see it or not, but it's really nice and pretty on there. We're going to take our embossing powder and stick it right on here. Making sure you have everything covered. And then just tap it right back in there. And look at how pretty that came out. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to put this back on. And we're all done with this part of it. Then we're going to take and heat this guy up. We're just going to take our... Um, heat tool here and it's got two settings. I like to use mine on high and it's just going to heat up. While that's heating up, I'm going to clean this guy off real quick. And we are good to go. So that's nice and hot and we're just going to watch the magic happen. Let's see. I love this part. Look at that changed color. So beautiful. And then once it changes color, you are good. It's that quick. So now we're going to take our uh, markers there and I'm just running over to grab a daffodil delight color but what we're gonna do this is all dry now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna color it in but we're gonna flip it over and color from this back side and I'm just gonna take my stamp and blends and we're just going to use the thin on this and kind of just color that in. And I'm taking the lighter one here. And coloring that in. And it's going to look so pretty. And just the fact that it's vellum alone is going to be really nice. It just gives it a little bit of, I don't know, it gives it um, like a little bit of romance. <laughs> so I'm going to again use this uh, darker side and go Give it a little bit of, there we go. And the same here. Just kind of giving it some, uh, hopefully a little bit of texture, a little bit of depth. Let's see if we could see that on the other side as well. And then they are blendable, so I'm going to go ahead and go back with this green again. And this one I'm going to use 
a little bit of the larger, see that large line there and that smaller line, and kind of blend it all together. And I mean, you could get really carried away with this. I think I'm going to do this part a little bit darker there. All right, now I'm going to grab my Daffodil Delight and color this little guy yellow. Just a little stem. And we'll just go to the smaller side and color that in. And now we're going to color in the uh, flower itself. And I think we're going to go with a lighter one. Actually, I'm going to start with a, a darker here. Just going around. And you want to stay within the lines. You could probably do a nice watercolor effect if you wanted to. If you went outside the lines, perhaps. I'm kind of just doing it fast. For time's sake. All right, and now I'm going to give it a little bit more of a texture by I didn't think to look at the colors there but we're gonna blend this all in and the same here just Making sure it blends nicely. And then the same right here. And I'm just going to kind of go along these lines. And then when we flip it over, look at how pretty that is. Can you see that? That is super pretty. Ah! Okay, now we're going to cut this out. And I'm going to be using the Oval uh, Framelits Collection. And I think this third one in will fit really nicely. There we go. Yep. So let's get out our big shot. And I'm going to do two things while I have the big shot because just to save a little bit of time. And I knew... I would misplace that little love. <laughs> I knew. I just knew it. Where did it go? Did I even say 
Did I even say I was going to misplace it? I think I did. I was going to save some time. Pulled it all out ahead of time. And now I have misplaced it. Okay. Well, maybe it'll pop up here really quick. But what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this guy out. I have my um, plate set using the old ones, having my tab up there. Then my um, cutting plate. I'm going to put my flower down. And then I'm going to put this guy down, centering it exactly where I want. I think I'm going to have it a little bit like this. There we go. And I'm going to put my other cutting plate on there and run that through. And then I like to just run it right back through. Are you guys staring at that little love thing and not telling me? Because that would be funny. I'm going to move this and I'm going to show you. Look at that. So pretty. And I'll put this one back. And when they come, they come like on this white piece with some tape. What I do is I cut a piece of um, magnet sheet and then they stick really nicely on the magnet sheet and I just keep that in there. So this one though is brand new and I haven't done that yet. All right. I'm gonna place you on hold because I need to find that little love thing. Okay, I found it. So I just started putting things away and then I never did pick up this green piece of paper that we were going to be using because this little guy was right under it. So you'll see I don't need that big huge piece. I only need a little teeny tiny piece. So I'm just going to cut that there. Save this for something else. And then we will do our big shot one more time. So I'm going to pull these out. I'm going to put my green, it, call me clover, so that way it matches with the, the stem there. And run that right through that big shot. So when you hear that click, you know it went through. Sorry about that. And we're going to pop this out. And now you could always use this for later if you wanted to do something with that. And then I just take my little tool here and pop it right out. And it pops out nice and easily. Then, if you have any pieces that need to come out, you can just pop those right out using that same tool. And then um, down the road, I will show you another tool that I use to get rid of these when they're really intricate. So, there we go. We got this nice little love there. Let's put this all together and see how it goes. All right. I know I want to use this little uh, fine tip glue. 
And of course I'm gonna need my snail adhesive. And I think I wanted to use some of this stitched as well. So I'm gonna cut off a piece there. Yep. Okay, so I measured where I kind of want it. I'm going to turn this guy over and just put some tape across the back to hold this nicely because I like to do this and use a faux front tied bow. Then I'm just going to take this and put this down nicely and I'm going to put some over that as well. We're going to line this up at the quarter inch mark on each corner. That way when I put it down, there we go. And then I'm going to take this guy and I don't think it needs to be under at all. Trying to decide. I think I will actually have it a little bit under. And then I'm just going to put some tape here in the colored area. And line that up nicely. And there's that part. Now we're going to put our little bow. I have a faux bow that I've just kind of uh, tied beforehand. I'm going to take some of my glue dots here, put one of those guys on there, and then put him down. Then I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to glue him right on there. So I'm going to take my fine tip glue and where I want to glue it, this vellum is kind of sticking up. So I'm only going to glue the O, the V, and the E. because I want it to um, kind of be coming off of the, the vellum. So I'm going to take that and just stick it right there. And then to put this back on, you just kind of guide it in there with your finger. That's a hard one if you're not paying attention. And then the final thing we're going to do, because this is what I like to do, we're going to add some little bling. And I'm just going to grab my rhinestones. And we can... Uh, Take that darker uh, Call Me Clover and just darken these guys up a little bit and make some nice Call Me Clover gems. How pretty. And we're going to take one of these larger ones. It right there. We'll take a smaller one and I like to put the larger one and the smaller one kind of next to each other and then we'll take one more and 
and we'll put it right there. And if you don't like that little area sticking up like that, you can just put some tape down and double side tape it there underneath the love. But I like it, so I'm going to leave these little edges up a little bit. So there's my card. I hope you guys love it. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. If you want to purchase anything uh, before January 31st, please use this hostess code. And make sure you go to jeanpersani.beauty in this... No. <laughs> jeanpersani.stampinup.net And I'll put that link down below in the description for you. Alright, beauties. Have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye!